and producer, and I'll be moderating this panel and chatting to you all today. Well, multicultural Manchester, defined by its people, a diverse and lively city where a taste of home is never far away. The University of Manchester does rank among the world's best international student cities. So we're going to be chatting to those who've been through this process of application and studying at Manchester today. So for those of you who are tuning in to Millie for the first time, Millie is a company dedicated to building a global community for international students, which is why we host these panels and webinars every weekend. So if you're interested in any future events we host, please do follow us on Instagram and LinkedIn at Millie underscore group for updates. And if you could drop in the chat where in the world you are watching this from, that would also be fantastic. So today's panel is going to be pre-prepared questions for the next sort of 40, 45 minutes. And we've also got a Q&A box here on Zoom so you can ask any questions you like specifically if someone is on a course perhaps that you want to study definitely ask a question about that because that's why they're here they're here to give you their advice and their experiences within this area and I'm sure all of them will be more than willing to help you in any way that they can so less of me rambling on please let me introduce our wonderful all-female panel Namrata, Shujing and Pihu all of which are going to share their individual wisdom and experiences of Manchester University so please can we kick off with your name where you have moved from to Manchester what you are studying and one fun fact about yourself Namrata would you like to kick us off hi I'm Namrata and I'm studying biomedical sciences at the University of Manchester so that's with uh, industry year and I basically lived in Singapore for eight years, but then moved to India um, last year. So I'm basically from like Singapore and India. And I love playing badminton. Hi, um, I'm Shujing. I'm studying accounting and finance at the University of Manchester. And um, I was born and grew up in China. And then I moved to Spain and have been living there for eight years. And then I moved to Manchester to study. Um, hi, I'm Pihu. I go to University of Manchester and I study biomedical sciences. I'm in my second year and I've grown up my whole life in Dubai and then I moved to Manchester for university. So I'm here now. Um, hi, I'm Sean. I'm studying accounting and finance. Um, I've, I, I live in Dubai and I'm in my first year at the University of Manchester. Thank you so much, Sean, for joining. And we're just going to reintroduce you as well um, as a fourth panellist for today. Thank you so much for joining and giving us some um, insights into accounting and finance at Manchester. So we're going to kick off with what your journeys were to Manchester from school. I'm sure you can all sort of flash back to those um, preparation stages, deciding where you're going to study next. What was your journey to Manchester and how did you find it? What kind of things, what kind of challenges, what kind of um, perks did you find as you were trying to kind of look into what university you were gonna go into and why did Manchester fit that for you? Um, so I actually wanted to study medicine for a long time. So I was looking at schools that were good for uh, the biological sciences and medicine in particular. So whenever you apply for medicine, you kind of have to choose four uh, medical schools and one non-medical school. And Manchester happened to be my non-medical school. It's very well known for its sciences and the lab sessions they have. It's very, very well known for um, the way they conduct their scientific research. Um, so it was definitely up there. And then uh, I applied to non I applied to medical schools also, but then it didn't really quite fit into what I wanted because they were offering me courses with foundation year. So um, Manchester was kind of my fallback option, but in a good way because it's still a very well-known university and I'm really happy to be here because it is really interesting and really fun and you get to meet so many new people every day. So. Um, personally, I found my interest in economics uh, during my uh, high school diploma, and I did uh, business management in IB, so 
Mm, I did like several units, which include uh, human resources, marketing, and more. And I found that accounting and finance is the unit that really attracts me. So I decided to pursue that degree uh, in the university. And I don't know, but I really like the UK as a country. So I decided to choose it. And I only made an um, application um, through the universities in the UK. And Um, for me, Manchester became a really good fit because when I was choosing my IB subject, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do in, in uni. And for my course, most of the universities in UK needed me to pick chemistry, but I hadn't like chosen that. So Manchester was one of the few ones that was like a good university and didn't need me to have chemistry. So it was always my first choice when I applied in the UK. And so that's what kind of got me to coming to Manchester at the end. Oh, and for me, I I knew that I always wanted to do something related to finance. So when picking my five universities on UCAS, I essentially I just looked at the rankings. And from from there, um, because I always knew that I wanted to be in the UK as I um as I found it like the best country to study in, I just looked at the rankings and from there I found that University of Manchester um was like best according to like what I preferred. In terms of the in terms of what they offered as um as my course of accounting and finance, and from there it was one of my top universities. I'm glad I got into this university. Yeah, absolutely. You've all smashed it getting into University of Manchester, and obviously Sean touched there on rankings. And talking about tools and resources, we obviously in different countries have different ways of the application to go to a university. How did you guys find the UK application process? Obviously, it's through UCAS. Um, but what kind of tools and resources did you find really useful, perhaps within the school that you were at or maybe online? Was there anything via social media maybe that really helped you or anything a bit like this, like Millie, um, that was able to support you with that application process and the exams that you had to take as well? Um, yeah, so I think um, this is kind of specific to biology and medicine, but um, there's a very good website called the Medic Portal, and which allows you to basically compare different medical schools um, and compare their rankings, what tests they need, uh, the subjects they require, um, and just like the overall percentage of getting into the uni out for medicine specifically. So that was a very useful tool. And if you have access to companies like PrepZone, um, I, I don't know how famous it is elsewhere, but it was quite famous in Singapore. So PrepZone is like a company, uh, like it's a company like Millie, which basically helps you figure out where you want to go and it helps you provide resources for um, preparing for these tests like BMAT and UCAT, which are specific for medicine again, but also SAT. And um, so I definitely used those. And we also had quite a few fairs at school where people would come in from different universities. So that was a very good way of talking to students, especially, and getting to know what the student life was like, how living in the halls was like, and questions like that that you have about just everyday uni life. I found the UCAS application quite straightforward for me. So I spent the first summer during high school preparing for the personal statement. I think it's like the, the most important aspect in terms of evalu evaluation. And I hope that I, during that time, I could have like known some platforms like Millie from where I could get more advice because that moment I just searched for the universities. And what, that, what I did, was to use the Ask Me uh, platform of the University of Manchester. So there are like peer mentors and student ambassadors who uh, can give you some very useful insights and advice. Um, for me, I mostly just used the help of my school counselors. They basically did like everything. Um, so UCAS was pretty much straightforward. Uh, they would also help us with like personal statement and like correcting the personal statement and stuff like that. Uh, the only kind of bump that I kind of faced was that they wouldn't tell us like the individual scores of our predicted. So it was kind of difficult to know whether, but they would always tell us if we were eligible to apply for the university and stuff. So it was fine at the end, but that was the base. 
Uh, for me, it was quite similar. I, my main source was my school counselor. Um, she was helpful enough to like um, guide me in the process of UCAS and my like check my personal statement um, and made it like as good as like as um, the best of my capabilities. And other than that, I um, online I use like um, student platforms such as um, the student room or Reddit. Um, those are really good in terms of just general questions about any university. Um, and that's about it mainly. No, thank you for sharing your range of resources. Obviously, we touched a lot on school counsellors, which I think is really important. Um, but obviously, yeah, as you said, shooting the ambassadors as well. That's a really good point about using those. And thank you also, um, Namrata, for dropping a few of those biomedical um, online resources as well. Um, I think I've got Medic Portal and WebZone. Do correct me if I've got that wrong. Um, but those will be really useful. And obviously, it's a really popular um, subject to go for. So if anyone finds that useful, then please Please do note those down. Um, obviously, you then all kind of was picking your courses as well. And when you look at the course, you obviously are interested in certain elements, perhaps what concepts and modules you're going to be studying. But also, what has been sort of the favourite part of your degree so far? And can you give us a bit of insight into the modules that you study for your course, but also how it's structured, how you're assessed? You know, what are classes looking like these days because a lot of people don't realize that that is a huge aspect of the learning as well as the subject itself um so because the biological sciences is such a huge school um there are multiple different uh, modules and multiple uh, special specialties basically in the school of biological sciences including biomed and immunology virology Bi microbiology, things like that. So normally in the first year, because it's still uh, the beginning phases of learning, um, people, all the uh, little courses in the uh, School of Biological Sciences all have similar classes. Most of them are the same ones. So they overlap a lot, which is why we have huge lecture theaters and filled with like 600, 500, 600 students at once. And um, it's one lecture basically talking at those 500, 600 students, and you kind of just have to take note of what's going on. Um, but however, they do have uh, the good one good thing that the uni does is that they have um, video recordings of the lectures. So even if you miss them and you don't like going into uh, into the lecture hall and just listening and noting it down, you can always stay at home and um, re listen to the recording and take notes of anything that you've missed. And so they have, of course, um, they have the classes are basically structured like that, but they also have these tutorial groups, which are smaller um, groups with six to eight people. And you tend to do smaller tasks um, in those groups. So for example, the other day we had to write a book review and we wrote, we had to read a book and then write a scientific book review, which was kind of interesting because it forces you to read a scientific um, novel, which you normally wouldn't in your day-to-day -day activities. So um, the small things like that make the degree quite interesting. Um, during the first year, I had to complete uh, 120 credits. And it's basically a mix of um, subjects of um, business management, economics. And we also have um, a course called Power and Value, which is like more related to so social sciences. So uh, I also have to pick an um, optional course and I picked international politics. So. I think first year for me has been a quite a good balance between economics uh, subject and also uh, a, sub a course that I'm really interested in, which is politics. And also um, the assessment is quite like um, on campus exam and also we have to write essays, um, online exams, etc. Um, so my first year we were kind of still like COVID was still kind of happening. So my lectures weren't fully in person yet. So we did have like pre-recorded lectures that we had to listen to, but now I think they're mostly all in person. So that's been a nice change. Um, also my course again is very like hands-on. There's a lot of practicals and stuff, which I've enjoyed doing a lot. In second year specifically, we have practicals that run from like 11 to 5 PM. And so it really gives you like a feel of what it would be like if you were working in a lab or something, which I feel like is really cool because it's made me understand if I want to do like something like this in the future. Um, so that's really nice. And because this course is like so big, um, like Namrata said, they have we have like tutorial groups, which are like 
you can be with like 10 people and so you get to know people in your course as well which is like a really easy way to meet people and it's it's quite nice oh yeah um as mentioned before basically you have either lectures or like tutorial groups um lectures could be around like 400 people in a room but tutorials much less um and for accounting and finance it's um you have 120 credits to do so you could either do 16 one semester and 16 the other or like 50 70 um and from there the main um subjects that this course kind of um focuses on is like economics and maths and those are those used to be my favorite subjects in school so because of that um doing this course is um quite enjoyable because i um have a passion for these subjects which um therefore like I'm not really like I don't really get bored studying this um course as there's it's something I truly enjoy doing. Oh, absolutely. And it's really important when you're studying for something for three to four to five years even to make sure that it, you're definitely passionate and interested in it. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to go into a career, but certainly studying it, reading behind it, all of those different things, you're going to be completely immersed in that subject. So it's really important to like it. Now, Sean, I'm going to come straight back to you, if that's OK, because we have got a question in the Q&A specifically for you. And it says, could you please detail the challenges you face during exam season and how do you balance your education with other activities? Lastly, as an aspiring economic student, how do I develop my skills to be able to study at the University of Manchester like you? Isn't that lovely? <laughs> that is lovely. Um, so um, to answer your first question, um, during this exam season, up to now I've had one that was in January. So... As it was my first time doing exams in at the university, um, I was a bit quite, I was a bit stressed, um, essentially because I've not really done it before, and um, I had a couple of exams that were in person, and I had a couple online. So, and the university does it be does its best to make sure that each student knows where they're going, um, for the exams because there's um, it's a big university, so there are a lot of um places around campus where students have to go to um do their tests so the, the university has their website and it does it does quite a well a good job in making sure each um student is well prepared and ready to take their exams properly and in terms of balancing my education with other activities um personally i like keeping like a kind of like a planner of, of my day to um make sure that i can balance um my education and I like I play sports and I go to the gym so I like making sure that I can um do everything um during my day because I feel like once you're at university if you um if you just like focus on one aspect such as either like playing sports or like only academics then you kind of miss out on what the university has to offer and because of this um and like you will not only miss out on that but you also miss out on the chance of making like friends and connections whether it's at a sports team or, or at your lecture. So because of that, I feel like for every student, it's really important to have a good work-life balance and make sure that you, while keeping like your academics as a high prior priority, you also make sure that your well-being is um, good because being far, far away from your um, home can also be a bit um, depressing at times. And lastly, um, as an economic student, I feel like the university has a lot, lot to offer in terms of we have an economics um, club, a society at university, there's an accounting and finance, there's a finance society. So because of um, through those societies and clubs, you can develop your skills, then then there's a lot of networking on um, events and usually a lot of firms um, can um, have events at university. So joining and being part of those events helps you connect with professionals, which help you develop skills that would um, further help you in your career. Right, absolutely, Sean. I, I really like your points on having a really holistic approach there to your studies and to you know social life as well, um, because you're studying in a new city and it's great to meet these new people and these new students, as well as keeping up your academics. So thank you for your tips on that. And also speaking a bit more generally about accounting and finance, Xu Jing, do you have anything to add as well? Because I know that you're studying the similar degree. Is there anything else you wanted to add as well about perhaps developing skills or things that maybe people should know if they're thinking about coming to study at Manchester? 
Uh, I agree on Shang's points on that, like, you know, of course, there are um, many societies related to e economics and finance. And I joined the accounting society and there, I think they give me a very valuable insights because the senior students have already go through all the process of, I don't know, spring week internships or finding a part-time job. So I just like network with them and they really help me during that process. And in terms of skills, I think it's just to be curious and be passionate about your course, uh, be willing to learn new things. Absolutely. No, and great point about societies. Um, that's certainly something that's quite nice to be engaged with because it's very it's very different to the academic sort of lectures and tutorials and things like that. So it's nice to kind of have a different um, sort of format to learning that subject. Um, obviously, Namrata and Pihu as well. Do you guys have anything to add about biomedical sciences and about um, perhaps the way that you you balance life with the you know challenges of that subject, but also any skills or things that you think students should engage with in order to think about potentially studying bio biosciences at Manchester? Um, I think one thing I will say is that don't get into the School of Biological Sciences unless you're really sure and passionate about the subject because it can get overwhelming very quickly. It starts off with learning about in the first week, you relearn everything you learned in like uh, your 13, basically 12th grade. And then suddenly the face picks up and you're looking at things that you've never even heard of before. And it's just a lot to do at once with all the coursework and the essays and just the way they mark their essays too are so much stricter and they just want so much, they, the expectations increase. So I think just being aware of how university works and being prepared in terms of what they want from your coursework and what they want from uh, you as a student is very important. And yeah, that's basically my biggest advice. Um, in my like opinion, I think one skill that people should really focus on before coming to biomed is probably research skills. You do a lot of research, you write a lot of lab reports and essays and stuff. So research would be really helpful. And then again, of course, like writing skills, you wouldn't think in like a course like biomed, or at least I didn't think that I would have to write as many essays that I, I have to. But all of my second year exams are like 90% essay based. So having like a good like writing foundation or just, you know, knowing how to write essays is something that if you start early would be really helpful because first year isn't is, isn't a lot of essays and stuff. So having that jump from like multiple choice in first year to completely essay writing in second year is huge. So if that's something you're building up on as you go, I think it'll be a lot easier for you. Definitely that preparation, um, because I think that that applies actually to every course as well. So that's fantastic advice P here about, you know, preparation with um, research skills and with writing. And I, I know that there are a lot of resources and, um, you know, people within um, Manchester and the services that they offer, I'm sure can sort of aid you with that as well. Do Have you guys engaged with with, a, you know, advice and support from the Manchester, especially with moving perhaps to the UK if you have come? Um, um, from elsewhere, what's that been like for you as well? Now, Marta, could you could you um, talk about that? Um, I did struggle in the beginning with the transition just from like another country into the UK in terms of just missing my family and then me having to cook all my meals along with the studies and everything. But um, I haven't gone to any of the resources provided, but I know that the university has a lot of different counseling sessions and they have a lot of uh, well-being um, counselors that basically help you and guide you into settling into uni so I think those are great and they're available everywhere you you kind of hear about them very often the university makes it a point to send you um, very regular emails about the support that they offer and the kind of support that they offer and it's all um, just it's free and you don't even have to pay and things so it's, it's basically very very student well-being oriented so I think making use of those is very important. And then finding like your own community within your accommodation is also very important. So if you come from a certain a uh, certain country and you tend to gravitate towards people from there, and I think that can form a nice community of just like help and support where you all are um, going through the same journey of transitioning from that country into here. So you all share the same experiences. So I think that could be helpful. 
I have to say that the University of Manchester is very inclusive and uh, diverse. So um, from societies, you can find um, sports societies, um, academic societies, and also from like, for example, Chinese societies. So you can like feel home when you are studying abroad. And there's also um, a big society called International Society. So basically it's a society for all the international students, so they organize like social events, um, cultural activities, um, language classes. So I think um, I feel very supported, like studying abroad. So, for example, they organize a Chinese New Year uh, cultural events. So, like all the Chinese students, um, we gather there and we just celebrate a very important uh, festival in our country. Yeah, I mean, just like everyone said, Manchester has been super inclusive, um, especially like for me, there's been so many people that have come from the same place that I'm from as well. So again, I like gravitated towards them. And I have I know so many people who have met people from where they're from, and it's been really easy for them to kind of transition into this. Again, like, like everyone's mentioned, societies is a really big thing in Manchester. I don't know any other uni that has as many societies as this one does. There's literally a society for everything. Like for me, again, like there's an Indian society that I have that they host festivals for like every Indian festival here. So it's been really nice to like meet people that way. And yeah, it's, it's really easy to kind of fit in um, to this uni. Oh uh, yeah, like once again, as everyone's mentioned, um, societies is definitely the biggest uh, aspect in, ter in terms of having a smooth trans transition between high school and university. And um, as well, like in during your first month um, of university and like freshers week, you you tend they tend to have more events um, than your than the rest of the academic year, so that you kind of feel like it's a better transition. You it's easier to find friends. Um, and because of that, um, the transition definitely becomes better. So societies is probably the biggest aspect in terms of making sure you have a smooth transition transition into university. Oh, fantastic. I mean, I know you obviously spoke a lot about the sort of Manchester culture there and how it feels very inclusive and very diverse. We're going to take the gloves off here and we're going to try and set Manchester apart from other universities I'm sure you might even have friends maybe that have gone to study at other UK universities what do you think sets Manchester apart from everywhere else and obviously I'm not just talking about the university I'm also talking about the city itself um where are you guys also you know living where would you advise students to try out and what what do you believe Manchester is most well known for and that people can really um embrace if they decide to come and study here um, I think just Manchester is really known for student life and its nightlife. So a lot of people like uh, coming to Manchester to experience like the student life at its peak, just like the nightlife and going out with friends and the amount of people that are here and they're all friendly and they're all nice. Um, so I think that's like a big part um, about staying in Manchester. Um, in terms of accommodation and living, the, the, the uni itself has a lot of um, uni accommodations that it provides for students. And uh, one good thing about being international is that it's almost guaranteed. Accommodation is guaranteed throughout the whole course of um, your education. Um, so that's a good thing. You don't have to hunt for um, accommodation after your first year. Uh, obviously, accommodation ranges from like the cheapest, which is includes shared shared uh, facilities like bathroom and kitchen, but then also it ranges from that to having your own um, room with like a privacy of having your ensuite room with like a kitchen and it's fancier. So it ranges, it really um, goes through every price range. So you can pick what suits you in terms of the location, um, where you want to be. There are different different um, accommodations have different, are known for different things. So one of them is known for its party life. One of them is known to be more relaxed and chill. One of them is um, like right in the city center. So it's just, you can really, you have a variety of options to pick from. And um, you tend to meet a lot of people through these flats that you live in because you share facilities. So I think that's very interesting and cool. I think Manchester is a big city, which has lots of things that you can do in your like social activities. And yes, 
And I think it's also like more affordable than London to live. So you don't really need to worry about like the cost as it's cheaper. And I live in a uni accommodation. So I think it's quite um, good because I didn't have to seek for accommodation, accommodation myself. So I just like pay for it and I got in. And the bills are included, I think, in most of them. And oh, and the special thing I think um, make um, University of Manchester special is the career services that it has. Um, the platform Career Ser um, Connect really helped me with uh, the CV cover letter and even has session to practice in for interviews. So yeah, because at first I I didn't know how to like make um a good CV and other the or tips for internship, but that platform really helped me. Um, yeah, for me, what was really special about Manchester was I don't know if anyone's heard of it, but it's called Curry Mile. Um, so I live on like I live on like that street basically, like at the start of it, and it has a like bunch of restaurants that are pretty cheap for for students and it has really good food it's like Indian and Arabic food and it's just it's really like a really nice place to like go with friends and um, stuff and I think it's Manchester is really well known for that because I think it's one of the biggest streets in like the UK which has all of these food chains um, and then again like nightlife and everything in Manchester is also amazing um, it's really easy to like meet people here and go for events and stuff so that's I, I really like that about Manchester. Um, for me, what for me what stood out the most about Manchester was the fact that um, it's a really young population, as in um, there's quite a few universities. So in total, you have a lot of um, people your your age, and yeah, as mentioned before, because you're living in like such a big city, you have a lot to do. Whether it's like restaurants or like your nightlife or just um, activities in general, you always have um, something to do during the weekends, whatever you're free. And um, that's what stood out the most for me on I, Manchester. And as Pihu mentioned, Corrymal is definitely um, one of the best places to go at, in the city. Absolutely. I think I need to come and check out this curry mall. It sounds amazing. Um, so definitely touch on a few cultural bits there and obviously some more uni specifics. Shijin, I think we've had a question since um, talking about the career service. Is there a career service? We've answered that question. And how can you balance a job alongside studying? So I guess to all of you, maybe we could talk a little bit about what you feel the career opportunities and the career support what's that like at Manchester and how much do they encourage that um, because obviously you're studying at this point but maybe you might go on to further research further study or you might decide to go out in the world of work but then we also think about what are those part-time jobs internships other things that you can be doing alongside studying what kind of opportunities do you guys think are there um, in Manchester and at Manchester as well um, yes, as mentioned, the career service is really, really um, efficient and it's really good. It They reach out to you a lot and they keep constantly, especially if you sign up for the emails, they constantly provide you with job opportunities and placement opportunities, especially if you're thinking of doing a placement year and if you're at that point in your education. Um, in terms of part-time jobs, this is one mistake that I made in the beginning is that I didn't look at part-time jobs early enough. I spent half of my first semester being sick, just trying to recover and trying to adjust to the new environment. So I didn't really have the opportunity to do a proper search for a part-time job. But I would say the one of the biggest part-time jobs that you can find that are, is really good for a student is like an ambassador job. So the university provides a lot of different ambassador jobs. Um, where you go to other schools and talk to them about Manchester and you get paid for doing that and they cover your hotel costs and food costs and things like that. So, um, and it's really easy because they know you're a student. So they understand uh, the education pressures and just the studying and balancing. So you can always talk to them if you're not available for anything um, because it is university led. So you can always help uh, first years come in as an ambassador and talk to them and be on the uni buddy scheme where you call up a newcomer and first year and talk to them about how they're doing so there are different ambassador opportunities like that that pay pretty decently but also you can go out and find um 
part-time jobs elsewhere in the city. Um, they're one of the very famous ones is working at Manchester United. So you go to Old Trafford. I have a friend who goes to Old Trafford and he works there. Um, so if you're a football fan, things like that could be very interesting. So I think it's just coming in, you kind of have to um, pick up the pace a little bit and uh, be independent in terms of trying to search for a job for you to actually get one that suits you and your needs, basically. Yeah, in career connect, they basically uh, announced the vacancies, um, like with a full-time job, part-time job, internships, or inside programs. So I got my position as try fair tried uh, auditor through that um, platform. So I just applied through that, and there's also a job shop in a student union. And uh, yeah, I think there are many opportunities, and also. Um, the some course convener just uh, send some like part-time job opportunities like in our course forum. So I will start as the research assistant to help to like write some transcript for a professor because I saw the, the announcement through there. So I think like there are many opportunities. Yeah, like like mentioned, the Career Connect is probably like the biggest thing in Manchester. If you like sign up to like their um, like notifications, they send you emails all the time with like the vacancies that they have. But then again, they're also very competitive, just like the student ambassador position and stuff. So there are a lot of jobs like outside of the University of Manchester that you could do as well. Like I've um, I'm currently doing like tutoring and then also a student ambassador, but not like specifically for Manchester it's for another company but in the University of Manchester if that makes sense um, and then in terms of like internships it's really hard for first years to get internship in in the UK I think because most of them want like um, at the end of second year students so it's easier for you to get them in like the summer um, and that's when you should kind of be applying towards like the start of second year um, to get one in the summer and stuff but Again, when you if you go to the career services and if you give them your CV and stuff, they're very helpful in um, correcting it and making sure it's like perfect to send to employers and stuff. Oh, uh, yes, yeah, so as mentioned, uh, Career Connect is definitely the best way to go. Um, if you were trying to find um, part time jobs or anything nearby and in terms of um, internships and for first years, you have um, um what it's called spring weeks and the best way to um find out more about C um spring weeks is if you could um you can go to the career counselor at the university so um they kind of help you in um deciding improving your cv and um helping in like in terms of interviews that you have to do for um pl applying to the spring weeks and then in the in your second year as mentioned um, you can then do um, internships during the summer. But for first years, it's mainly spring weeks. Thank you. I feel like that was really um, unique and specific to University of Manchester as well, which is fantastic because I know a lot of people obviously use LinkedIn. Uh, we obviously all connected via LinkedIn. So that's a, a really important networking tool as well. But to actually use the resource, resources that you're investing in um, as a student do go and use those, they're there to help you and they can definitely um, try and help with anything from a summer job to potentially an internship if you're looking at second and third year um, and obviously anything else that you might be interested in, even if that's a volunteering role as well, anything to sort of bulk up that CV is always fantastic. So if there are any other questions, please do ask them via the Q&A box. Um, we're here for another five minutes. So we are going to start rounding up now with some more advice that you guys wish you knew before coming to Manchester I guess were there any kind of things that surprised you a lot about university that surprised you particularly about Manchester Uni they could be good or bad things but I guess just things that you wish you could prepare for and I know obviously earlier we were talking a bit about the sort of preparation and the research skills but was there anything else with the with the transition or with finding friends or with connecting with tutors you know all those sorts of things do you have any advice on those? Um, I would just say, uh, everything's already been said, but I would just say uh, when you look for like 
accommodations, for example, I think it's really important whether you can, if you can imagine a life living, um, living a life, sorry, in the university in, in that circumstances. So for example, I have a fully self-catered accommodation and I didn't really take into account how much I would have to cook and like prepare my meals, but also manage my studies and all of that, which um, which was quite hard in the beginning. Um, it took a toll on my health too, that's why. Uh, so I think it's just really important to just know what you can do and what you can't do and prepare for those um, circumstances from uh, the get-go. So from the summer that you're free, we finish your exams, start preparing for a life at uni and just small things like registering for a GP or um, having your medicines in place for when you're sick because once you do get here things go by so quickly you forget to pay attention to these things and it is it is really really important part of living here is taking care of yourself and people tend to forget that so yeah just things like that registering for a GP just knowing how the NHS works having a national insurance number which makes it easier for you to apply for jobs uh, things like that is kind of important yeah My advice is to not be a perfectionist and to not put that much pressure on you in terms of academic studies, especially if you're not coming from like um English speaking country or environment. Because personally, I did my high school in Spanish, so so moving to Manchester it was a like a radical change for me. So it took me a while to get used to like you speak English whole day to have all the lectures in English. Yeah, at first I was a bit anxious because I want I don't want to be left behind and I want to achieve good grades and also balance my um, study and work and social life. So it's just like, take it easy. Yeah, like like she just mentioned, I wouldn't like don't put too much pressure on first year, especially because for me, first year didn't count at all. But I think it counts a little bit like now. Uh, but just in general, like don't stress about it too much. Just try to adjust to yourself because moving to a completely new country without like your parents and stuff is obviously hard. So just like like don't stress about that. Um, also, just research a lot about the university you're going to apply to. I think this is something that I didn't do too well because I kind of just looked at their rankings um, and not so much like the, the university. Um, I thought Manchester would be kind of like a campus university. It is more of a city university where the campus is kind of just spread out throughout the city, which I've gotten used to now. But I think I think it just depends on the kind of person you are. So definitely research and see what you like and don't like just look at rankings as everything kind of. Um, yeah, my main, um, my main um, advice is to kind of come out of your comfort zone and um, explore new things, um, do, especially during your first year where um, your academics doesn't really matter because um, you, it doesn't count towards your final grade. So because um, because of this, you can explore new things around the city, meet new people, kind of come out of your comfort zone, and this only helps you build um build get like character as an individual, and because of this, um, like exploring new societies and doing new things, you'll meet more friends, and because you meet more friends, it'll kind of help in um your transition and kind of make you feel more comfortable at university. So my main um my main kind of advice is kind to kind of explore new things and come out of your comfort zone. Fantastic, a brilliant message to finish on as well. And obviously we've touched a bit on uh, there are things such as getting to know the city before you go and things like that. I know that there are virtual tours. A lot of the university websites now, not, not just Manchester Uni, but a lot of UK unis are providing those to give you a better sense of what the city like. What's the campus? Is it a city campus or is it more based in the city? Um, and also just any general information, perhaps English language support, if that's something that you need, or, you know, from anything to services about how you should be contacting your local GP or getting your national insurance number, all those admin bits that we hate, but we have to do. But I really loved, um, I think overall, you all said about enjoying first year and taking uh, the gas off the pedal a bit. It's, it's actually not so much about 
you know your academics in that sense it's about fig fig figuring out the university what it has to offer who's there who you're going to be around for the next three years and really embracing that that start to a new chapter um but I guess I feel like that was really really good advice to finish on does anyone else have anything they'd like to say about Manchester before we wrap up today thumbs up all good I think we're all good fantastic well I think that's a wrap a huge thank you to Namrata, Xu Jing, Piha and Shan today for talking to us about everything to do with Manchester. We really appreciate your advice and your experiences that you shared with us. We've obviously got a few key takeaways, so I hope you guys have been taking notes, but obviously you can re-watch this recording on YouTube at any point you like. And thank you also to our audience, whether you're a new or current part of the Millie community, we really appreciate your unrivaled support. And if you do need any help with university or career guidance, please do check out our website, our Instagram, our LinkedIn, our YouTube and you can also contact all of our very friendly panellists today as they've kindly given their contact details. So have a fantastic rest of your Saturday wherever you are in the world and I shall see you all soon. Thank you so much guys. Bye!